Presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hello, one. Hello, all. We are so blessed to have awesome speaker, Michelle Gray, at um, the Healing Dash um, Art dot com. Hi, Michelle. And hi, Eric. Hello. Eric's like, hi, mom. Love you. Hi, everybody. Love you. Love you too. All right, guys. I want to wish you all a very happy new year. I know 2022 has got to be better because I'm very encouraged as a physician. I was talking to Michelle about this, about mm-hmm. Omicron being the, the pandemic. I mean, it's like with the Spanish flu, you know, we we weren't able to obviously have the technology to determine the different variants. But generally, you know, a virus does not want to kill its host. It has something to reproduce in, right? So they tend to mutate to become weaker and weaker so that they're highly transmissible but very weak. And that's what Omicron is like. So I don't know why people are locking down. They need to stop this shit and then, you know, protect the vulnerable, the elderly, the even the compromised, quarantine them, but don't do lockdown. Really, let Mm -hmm. kids, let us get it. It's like a common cold for most people. And um, anyway, the Spanish flu it ended up getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and it probably just turned into something very similar to the common cold, okay? And, and it just disappeared um, because the virus does not want to kill its host. Uh, now, stupid mm-hmm. virus like smallpox, yeah, they did. They killed them, and that's why it's eradicated. That's one reason it's eradicated, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, today, the title of this show is Eric Shares How 2022 is the Best Year to Be Our Original Self. I think, Eric, every year is a good idea time to be our original self, but it's so hard to find that state. So, yes. you know, how, you know, how will this, you know, being, becoming our original self, how will, well, how will this help us reclaim our power, I guess? Because, you know, we want this to be the best year ever. And to do that, we need to reclaim our power and become our original self. So, Eric, take it away. Yeah, Eric's like, thanks, Mom. Thanks. He's, like, taking the mic over, like, thanks, Mom. He's got got the mic in his <laughs> hand. Um, he says hi again, everybody. And um, this is something that, you know, uh, Eric, when I first met Eric, one thing that he really pounded into me is be yourself, be yourself, be authentic, be yourself. And we've all heard this, you know, many times, just be yourself. If you want to do well, just be yourself. And Eric says that you is are truly. What's that? Yeah. Be you and own it. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Be you and own it. And so I asked him on the other day when we were talking about starting off for the new year, I said, what did you want to talk about? What do you want to say? And he says, let's talk about the original self and why it's important. And what he said to me, which makes complete sense to me, is he says, um, it's like, you know, guys, right now in particular, he says, we're going through deconstructing the world, basically. We're deconstructing all of the different, um, like our medical system, our pharmaceutical, our financial banking. system, banking, oh, God, everything yeah. is changing. And so he says, And what we're seeing is he goes, let's look back at the last two years. And what we've seen is we've seen people work from home. We've seen people rethink how they are in the world. We've seen people come together with their families. And a lot of people have made changes, changes to their jobs, changes to their living. He says, and so this year, he says, it's one step further, and many are already well on their way to this. What are you doing in this world that comes from your natural self, from your natural talents and abilities? Because we're moving forward, and he says, universally supported, energetically supported is what you're giving from yourself to the world. So what you came here naturally to do, what you're good at, and he says that's being supported because he says we're all moving into the society that is about what we give, what we give into the world. How do we serve? How do we share into the world? And no matter what way that we do that. 
And so he said, you know, the original self, like, what exactly is that? What exactly do you do you mean by that, Eric? And he says, um, the original self, he says, guys, think about the identities that you get over your lifetime. So, you know, the, um, the things that people tell you, what you learn in school. He says, um, the way that you dress, the jobs that, they use, that, you know, people say you go to school, you get married, or you go to college, you get married, you get a nine-to-five job. He says, all of the identities and everything that comes on to you, he says, well, just like the systems are breaking apart, all of these identities on us are breaking apart. And he says that's also part of the spiritual path, the spiritual awakening. It's getting to know what identities or personality don't fit with you anymore. So he's like, and what does this leave you with? <laughs> he says, it can make you feel spiritually naked. And that's an awesome thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he says that the hard, the hard part is, though, is he says that um, a lot of us are – not at the place where we're really in that confident spot of what our original self is or what our true self is. And he says that's part of the journey. And he also says, you know, it makes us very vulnerable. Um, people around us, uh, friends, family, they might look at us and say, you know, you're, you're a little different. You're not, you don't seem like the person that I thought you were. And, and he says, but you know what, you're, you're still you. As you're doing this, you're still you, but you're uncovering your true divine self. So, yes. And um, it's, it's amazing how parents and, you know, it's, it, we don't give enough credit, uh, credit. Siblings also try to mold us into something we're not. And, yes. and society, media, and all that. And so what you're saying, Eric, is we need to strip away all the artificial things that, that is, say, this is how you're supposed to be. This is the music you're supposed to like. This is the fashion you're supposed to wear. And bull, I call bullshit on that. No. Strip it away. Figure out what's coming from you, what's coming from externally, and figure out how to be your authentic self. And I think that, you know, the one positive thing about COVID, uh, the pandemic, is we've had time to reflect. And a lot of us have time, I always work from home, to work from home and we realize, hey, this is good. I don't want to go back to my nine to five job. I'm going to, I'm going to make a business for myself. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. Or a lot of people have said, I don't want to live, live in this hell hole. I can work from home, so I'm going to go up to the mountains and live in you know, Colorado or whatever. So right. I think a lot of that is happening. And is this, Eric, part of the age of Aquarius? Sort of like the indigos yes. are breaking down the old, and the rainbows yes. and the crystals are rebuilding a, 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 a awakened society as part of the Aquarius age. Yes, because he says um, a lot of folks that are listening right now and that are feeling this and feeling this um, sense that they have not belonged, they have, they have not fit in with the way that society has molded them, as he says, because you came here to be yourself. You came here to expose that truth for yourself and then to set that example for others. And he says it, you know, and it often you may be the person that has felt either manipulated um, or, or felt a lot of pressure in trying to be this somebody that you're not. But he says uh, what's really important, though, is also to identify how, how do we start to do this and he says, you know, this is a process that we're on, and we naturally uncover who we really are by following our spiritual path. But he says, you know, how to really dig deeper into this this year is he says, boundaries, guys, boundaries. He says, know what you believe in, question what you believe in, be okay with what you believe in as being something that can change as well, because this is ever-changing. You're peeling off many layers of that onion. So be okay with that changing. But he says, also, don't hold on to guilt and be okay to say no to other people. He says, that's number one. He says, if you've always been agreeable, if you've always been the person that has gone along with what other people have told you to do, but inside you've said, no, I don't want to do this. This isn't me. He goes, be okay with saying no and be okay with other people not being okay with that. And he also says, um, 
the other thing is to to help really find your true self, as he says, go back to the original you that you can remember. He says, can you remember what had meaning for you years ago? Can you remember what you li- used to like to play or fantasize about when you were a child? He yeah, says, what makes your heart? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And he did this with me because um, when I was really trying to uncover direction, and he did an exercise with me, and he says, close your eyes and go back to a time when you were a child. And he took me back to when I was six years old, and he says, what did you like to play the most? And I said, well, I used to like to play teacher. I loved playing teacher. Oh. And and he had said to me, he says, well, what, why? He goes, what did it give you? And I said, I don't know. I said, I didn't think about why. It just felt right to me. It just felt like it was me. And he says, and that's yeah. the thing, it, it does, you don't have to understand why. You don't have to figure out all the reasons why it's there. It's part of your nature. And so he says, if you go back to childhood and think about the games that you played, the, the positions that you like to play in the games, what was the role when you played house? Who, who was the person that you wanted to be? Did you want to be the teacher? Ah. Did you like being the artist? Did you like being the one that took care of everybody? He's like, think think about those types of things when you had no other cares in the world, when there wasn't that yeah. subject of all of the pressure on top of you. Because he says, when you do Did that... You like he, Did you like to play doctor? I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, Actually, mean, I like healer doctor uh, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, exact, that's exactly it. And he says, so when you get to know that, spend the time to know that. So he says, sit down and write about it, uh, go into meditation, visualize about it. And he says, and remember that the more you do that and the more you play with that, the more clear it will become. And the more you're going to start to see that come out in your everyday behaviors and everyday activities. And he goes, what ends up happening is the things that are not you start to stand out like a sore thumb and when somebody Ah. pushes a behavior on you or an activity or something onto your identity or projects something he says it's almost like you've got a set of armor on you and it bounces back off because it becomes habit for you to only act in accordance with your true self in everything that you do and he says so it's an ongoing process but he says this is the time for it because this is what's going to lead you more and more to the opportunities, to the people, to the places, and to the things that are aligned with you because it's meant to be this way. And he says, and mom, you're exactly right. This is what Age of Aquarius is bringing out for people. Good. Alignment. Alignment with Alignment. others with, and mm-hmm. so forth. And uh, I was just wondering um, if other lives, if, you know, we live lives, obviously, past, future, present, do they alter in any way who you really are authentically? I mean, just based on the experiences? Or is there just this native you, regardless of the experiences from well, life? He says the the innate you is is the divine part of you. So he says um, there may be some things from other lifetimes that can affect your personality, um, but he says it's the innate innate parts of you. It's the divine self that you're pulling through. I I see. So basically, I mean, I I think it's so important to ask yourself, to to ask, is this coming from my intuition, my inner compass, Uh, Mm -hmm. this trait or this, this ask or whatever? Or is it coming from external, some external compass, whether it's a person or a group or society, et cetera? And so how do we best mm-hmm. do that? I mean, it feels different to me when something is my intuition. It feels like real. It feels absolute. It's mm-hmm. like a weird feeling in my chest that I get when I, when I feel the truth. So can you help us navigate that here? Yeah, he says that um, the best way to do these types of things is he says, make an exercise out of it. So he says, you know, if you're having a decision to make or um, 
anything that you are choosing that you're unsure about, as he says, hold it out in front of you. He says, really, take the decision, the idea, the whatever it is, and he says, actually, put yourself into it. Visualize yourself into that and see how it fits because we are feeling beings. And so he says, just yeah. like what you said, Mom, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it reject or you're going to feel it settle. And he says, get to know that feeling within yourself. Get to know how that feels. And he goes, if you want to practice with it, take things that you already feel really good about. Take things that you already really enjoy and sit in that enjoyment and feel that. And then take something oh. else that you reject, that you don't know or you don't like. And he says, and then put that within you and see if I did this, how does this feel? Get to know the differences in feelings. And he says, and make it fun. Cause he says, guys, this doesn't have to be all serious. This doesn't have to be something that, you know, we're, we're really focused and serious into. He says, have fun with it, play with it. He says, allow the, the littlest of things. It doesn't have to be like waiting for some big event to come to practice with this. He goes, practice at the grocery store. He goes, Practice with, uh, do I like this soup or do I like this soup? He says, uh -oh. practice with this, these what these choices. What feels more like me? Am I eating the oatmeal cookie because somebody told me I like it? Or do I really like chocolate chip? He says, so play with these I types like of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But he says, he says game? play with it. Oh, go ahead. Have fun with it. Well, speaking of fun, you know, children always know how to have fun. Is uh, is there some sort of fun exercise we can uh, guide our children through for the same purpose of, of helping them distinguish intuition from external influence? Well, he says, first of all, the, the, the best thing that you can do is he says, be, be an example for your children. So do it with your of children. Course. He says, practice it yourself so that you're able to then show your children, but he says, allow your children to decide for themselves. So the best thing that you could do, he says, as a parent is to give your child options. So he says, rather than say, this is what I want you to do, or he goes right from little, this is what I want you to wear. He goes lay out when they're, when they're little, when they're just babies and walking, lay out two sets of clothing. Lay out two different colors. Would you like this one That's or would you like sense. this one? He must have read my books because in, in hearing is believing, um, how words can make or break our children, our kids or whatever. And yeah. also uh, raising, way, raising children to think for themselves. One of, the, one of the things is to give them a choice. And I did that with my children. Because, yeah. you know, yeah. I always he, argue about what they ate for breakfast. But I, I would, instead of, you know, I would just say, what would you like today, uh, cereal or eggs and bacon? Yeah. I always say bags and I don't know what it is. Bags and bacon. You want the bags and <laughs> bags and bacon? Just... <laughs> he says he goes yeah, mom. He goes you, you know what you're talking about. He says yes. Yeah. Because that's right. You know what you're talking it about. Them a, you know, it gives them power and it also gives them the opportunity to exercise. Well, what do I really like? And maybe it's none that's of the right. above. You know. Yeah. That's right. Like, That's right, because he says that it helps it, it helps your kids feel responsible for their decisions and gives them that choice that they're taking that um, having confidence in what they're choosing for themselves. And he says, and this is the thing, because when he goes in talking about power, and he says in reclaiming your power is when somebody else tells you what you're going to do and somebody else tells you what's best for you and you grow up with taking that in and becoming an adult and you start to lean on or become very codependent on other people making that decision and you're giving your power away in many other circumstances as well by habit, he says. So he says when you give a child a choice and you allow them to build that confidence, they have no problem in choosing because they're learning to choose what they prefer. They're learning to take that thought pattern to, to make those choices. And so he says it's a very healthy thing to do to allow them to um, naturally build on that themselves. Yeah, this reminds me of, and I don't know why, or my, but anyway, we were driving with the kids, and it's kind of late at night. I don't know where we were 
going from or to. Well, I think we're going home. But anyway, so uh, talk radio was on because, of course, love that. Anyway, so <laughs> there was a debate between a woman and a guy for some political office that, you know, there was some election. And <clears throat> the woman uh, was a former prostitute or stripper or probably both. And so we were listening, and it was really fascinating, and the woman had so many amazing things to say. And so we mm. thought Eric was in all the kids were asleep, but Eric kind of, you know, stirs a little bit and said, I agree with the whore, and then went back to sleep again. <laughs> so that is on a repeat list, man. I agree with the whore. <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. You me now. You want me out of your lives. It's fine. Anyway, the truth is self. Knowing who you yes. really are and accepting yes. it, embracing it, enjoying it is so important to people. Now, yes. what prevents? And also, you know, it, it, you get, you know, a, a, a flack from other people who say, "Wait, no, I told you you need to be a lawyer," or "I told you it." Screw them, okay? What What's the worst that can happen if they disagree with you and give you this 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 flack, this you know, making you trying to make you feel better about yourself. We're eternal beings, okay? What the hell is the worst that can happen? We're eternal beings. That's, that's right. So it's okay. That's right. And, we're all and Eric be, says, all going to be okay. He says, you know, practice, practice saying no firmly. You can say no firmly with loving kindness in your heart. You can feel safe and secure the more you practice claiming your truth. And he says, because, you know, your true values, your wants and needs are your own. And he says, and you will teach that to other people as well. So it's extremely important. And he says, and you know what? Chances are, he goes, somebody may not be happy with your decisions in the beginning, but he says, you'll notice that a lot of relationships will transform when you start to take your power back. Right. You are your own sovereign power. You right. alone have complete sovereignty over, sovereignty over your energy. No one can access or interfere or claim any part of your energy without your permission. So just remember that. That's right. And um, so um, there's one thing I was going to say before I segue into this, but um, so what prevents some people from struggling to – find their um, their authentic self? Why is it so hard for some? Um, Eric says it can stem from different things, but um, he says sometimes it comes from codependency, um, fear of failure. Um, mm-hmm. He says it, it depends on what the situation is. Um, he says, you know, uh, Depending on what your circumstances in life, sometimes people become confused about why they're here. Um, they can become confused and and who they are in the first place. So if they're not identifying with something, because he says it's one thing to identify with something that's not you, but what if you're not identifying with anything? So it depends on what your circumstances. Yeah. But he says a lot of it yeah. comes from codependence. It's it's the core. Yeah, that's too bad. Okay, so um, does it help to through a medium or past life regression or between lives regression to to find out what your spiritual mission is? Do you think that would help? Mm. Eric says yes, but he says you know you're not always going to get the answers that you think you're going to look for when you do this. He says so. Remember. When you're going to see somebody, go in with an open mind, and you're, it's almost like he says you're going to get signposts. And so um, sometimes it'll be more clear than others. He says it depends on what your path is as well, because he says it's uh, our meaning spirit. He says it's it's our goal to help you discover that path yourself. So it's not always uh. going to be that black and white answer, because he says part of that journey is in that discovery. He says part of that is not just the end result, but it's that, that process of creation and discovery that is really where we create that confidence. 
He says it's going through those steps because especially when you're really trying to find your authentic self and you're maybe in a place where you've had your power taken away and you've not felt empowered throughout your life, that actual process of discovering that is what builds that confidence that healing, he says, in that solar plexus area, and that healing in the sacral area, he says, that's rooting that confidence in yourself, and that wouldn't be the same if it was just handed to you. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's a, you know, no pain, no gain, basically. Um, some of the techniques I like to use uh, when I'm dealing with people that try to talk me out of being my authentic self is, you know, the uh, basically the sandwich technique. So you have something positive. Yes, I, I I acknowledge your point. However, and then this is not who I am, and then end off in a positive note. But I really like who you are, or whatever. I mean, sandwich. Mm-hmm. It's positive, mm-hmm. negative, not positive. And also, I like to imagine myself with, you know, a, a plexiglass plate in front of me, and all these horrible things mm-hmm. people say. Blink, blink, blink. They just don't have any access to my energy. That's and exactly also right. I like act like a reporter where I d- 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 kind of detached from the horrible things they say. And I'm like yes. taking notes. Like, oh, I'm curious that you would think such a thing. Or, you know, oh, interesting. And, you know, that sort of detachment. Also like that is what exactly I said, right. You know, with kids. That's, what Eric I say said those the, are really good techniques. And in hearing and he, believing the book, one of the things I do is use the nevertheless technique. It's like when a kid is whining, oh, but there's a, yes, I understand. Nevertheless, you're grounded. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, and nevertheless, and nevertheless, and keep doing that. Nevertheless is a great underused word. And that's all. Yes. I'm, I'm going to use that word. I'm going to practice that word a little bit more. Nevertheless. Hope my kids aren't listening. I understand. Um. Nevertheless. <laughs> You cannot take the car for, you know, two weeks, whatever. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, no, Eric just said that um, the other thing is, too, is he says, Mom, remember, um, everybody, because the things that are being said to you and projected onto you, he says, they're never about you. Truly never exactly. about you. Oh that is so true. It's about them. And you yeah. cannot be responsible for somebody else's reaction. You can only, and their emotions, et cetera, you can only be responsible for how you react to them. That's it. That's right. Are you ready to take a question? No, that's a, big, that's a big one. I was just going to say that for me, that was a, a deal breaker for me, is when not only I understood that, but I actually em- employed that into what I was doing. Is When I understood that, other people's reactions and what they project at me has nothing to do with me and who am I to take responsibility and take that away from them and take it on. And, and that's a really, it's really a big thing for all of us. And Eric just says it's, it's important for us to remember that and to continue to remember that because we can't stop other people from saying and doing things. Exactly. But a lot of people say, well, I don't want to, you know, hurt their feelings. You have to have faith that people are going to be okay. They are also internal beings, okay? Faith mm-hmm. in the basic to be okay. That's right. If you set That's right. boundaries, okay? It's okay. That's right. Anything else yeah. we'll uh, take callers? Yeah, Eric's rubbing his hands together, and he says, let's go, Mom. He goes, 2022, let's go. All right. I don't know what this hand raising is. I'm not sure. All right. Okay, so we have somebody from the 212 area code. Hi. Go. Hi. Uh, hello. This is Bryn from New York City. Bryn, the artist. Hi. How are you doing, Bryn? Uh, uh, Happy New Year. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, guys. I'm talk- I have to use my cell phone because the direct connect didn't work, so the, the, it, it might okay. be terrible, but I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bryn. I've had a bit of a cold lately, but I'm feeling a little better. Um, oh, it's okay. Uh, I just want to. I, I want to ask Eric: Is this year for me more about inner progress versus outer progress? Oh, what a great question! Mm-hmm. 
Eric saying hey, Bryn, and of course I'm saying hi, Bryn. It's so hi. nice. Happy New Year. Nice to hear your Happy voice. Happy New Year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eric says yes, and he goes, and you know what? He says, this is about freedom for you. He goes, this year is about freedom and about you creating your own happiness on the inside. Okay. So is it... Is so, it will any that, practical steps? Will that manifest in the outside, or is it just all inner... Oh it's no, like he it, says. He says no. This is. It, it's all from the inside. So he says, what you're doing is your theme is about freedom, and so yeah. how you're doing that is he says, you know, there's some some steps that you're walking through right now, and he says, and some things that are not easy. He says in the mind because this really is about freedom from the mind, and he mm. says that you are so close to having your reality. Um, because he says you have a feeling of being trapped in many ways. And yeah. he says, so this is, this is a, about you being able to connect with yourself on the inside. And he says, and it's really working through with the tools that you have to be able to let go of, and he says, some of the self-sabotage, some of the right. sabotage of, of the circumstances. Because he says, yes, there are some circumstances that have happened and have gone on that can look a certain way. But he says it's really important for you to take your mind, your thoughts, and your feeling and see it on the lighter side of things and to keep that momentum going. And he says because what's happening is he says you've got a lot of great things that have been manifested and created. And he says so really – this is about you allowing some freedom within you so you can allow these things to come into your life. Hmm. And he says, I know it's easier said than done, but he says it's really about practice and checking with yourself. And, you know, when you feel down, when you feel low, he says, go ahead and allow yourself to have those moments, but then look to the next best thing. Look to the lighter side of every situation and focus on it in that way so that you can okay. get that momentum going for yourself to feel better. Yeah. Uh, it, All right. His art, is that a, a way to 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 work on the inner stuff? Yes, he says that um, his art, um, his connection with spirit. Uh, Eric also says that meditation would be extremely beneficial, beneficial for him right. as well. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah. Gonna do more of that. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks, Bryn. Let's see. All right, let's see. We we have somebody from the 303 area code. Hey there, what's up? Hi, this is Christine. How are you? Christine, how Christine. are you? Hi, what's I'm doing for? well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. New Year. <laughs> that was a great, great, great channeling. I was, I really enjoyed that. Um, so keeping with the um, theme, I keep finding myself returning to a relationship that I keep trying to get out of. And I'm wondering how that is moving me towards my authentic self or what my soul is wanting from this. That's a great question. Eric says that um, part of what, um, and he says it, it, what holds you back in some ways is your soul wants to let go of fear. Um, are you in a relationship right now? Um, I'm in and out of this relationship, but we keep kind of being drawn back to each other. And my mind tells yeah, me that it's that? not what I want. What's that? Yeah. With, because what Eric says is that your your soul and your higher self is trying to help you with direction right now. Um, and there's a, a part of you that feels safe in this relationship. And he says, and there's a fear. And part of that fear comes to safety and having identity with this person. And he says that there is something there that has drawn you back and forth, but he says, 
you already said it. You know that it's something that's not quite good for you. Right. So he says, you know, he says that there is success when it comes to relationship for you, but it has to come into your life in the way that you want it to be more authentic to you has to do with you choosing more authentically for what you want right now. Okay. Perfect. Does okay, that make so sense? why why is she drawn back to the same relationship? Is is it a past life thing or yes. a spiritual yes, contact there is. that needs to be but there there is. Um um Eric says that there is um more than one lifetime where they have been connected. Um yeah. but okay. he says that their their cycle has outgrown itself. Okay. Because he says that once you get into fear it starts to get into a get into a new cycle. So uh, he says it has outgrown itself and he you know, he's not saying this would definitely happen, but what I'm gonna say is is that he gives the sense that to walk away to choose what's best for yourself is if something were to come back together in the new energy, it would be very different. But to right. stand up and, and walk forward on your own without fear knowing it's gonna be okay no matter what. It's what's going to give you yes. more power within yourself. That's good. That makes sense. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you Thanks, Christine. Thanks, you guys. Have a great one. Thank Bye. you. You too. You too. All right. Got somebody from the 786 area code. Hi there. How you doing? 786 area code, are you there? Okay, we'll go to the next one. The 817 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hello. Hi, 817, is that Dallas? Yes, how are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? And how can we help you? Hi, this is Daisy Lee. Um, okay, I'm kind of a little, I'm a little lost. Well, not little, a lot. Um, I have, well, first, um, the job, I, I thought I was going to change jobs. I applied for jobs and I didn't get it. Then I'm having issues at home with, um, my marriage. <laughs> so it's like everything is, it's been coming back to, well, what's my purpose on all of this? I, I, help others but I don't see anything returning. So So Eric, what do you need to do right now? Well Eric says that, you know, you're you're in a cycle right now because he says that there's new connections coming in for you. So he says there's opportunity and he says that this is connected to your purpose. Um people that you're connecting with coming into your life. So I don't know if there's something else, another opportunity that you're aware of that you may have a choice at when it comes to your work. But he said this is part of what you're doing. So he says there's more support coming in. Um, He also says that within your marriage, um, he keeps saying cycle. It's within a cycle. So um, you must have gone through, like, do you seem to go through the same cycle in your marriage right now? Like a same type of situation? Yes. Yes. So he said that what's happening for you, because part of changing the cycle is going to be you being able to step into this new energy for yourself. You are very service orientated. Like you've got a very, um, are you a healer? Not that I know of. Uh, That's another thing. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing something else. I'm not sure. Hmm. Because Eric says that you have a healer's energy. Like you've got that, that care, that, that service. So he said to, um, to start to explore, um, what he's saying right back to what we talked about today. If you could do something that you didn't, you don't have to worry about how it would happen or how you would do it. 
some memory when you felt really good, something that you would really enjoy doing. Because he says it's about changing the energy around you to start to get inspiration coming in. Because that's going to help. There's, he keeps saying new people, new people coming in that you're connecting with. And this is going to help change up that cycle. And it's going to help your marriage as well. Oh, oh so can Eric, can you help her a little bit? Help too. Scalar work would help too. What's that? Okay. I do scalar on my husband, mm-hmm. but I don't know if I I I don't see any change yet. Wait, did no. you did, what did you do with your husband? I did the um the one for um oh my gosh. Well, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, but it's okay. You might not want to divulge it. Did you ever do? Right. Did you ever do the energy repair protection enhancement, otherwise known as super portal work with increased probation on the whole household? I did that one, yes. I did that one okay. first, and Wait. then I did his. Wait. Did you do it before or after mid-October? Because we have added seven different things to that. You know, mm-hmm. like the iPhone, iPhone 2.0. Um, it might have been that, before you know, October. Okay, so maybe you need to consider the tune-up. It's much cheaper, it's, and it gets it's, 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 yeah trapped emotions mm-hmm. in every household member. It gets it cuts all ancestral DNA in every household member. It clears out old karma. It retrieves lost soul fragments and reintegrates them. It's just there's a whole bunch of shit. Um, that is now. I remember, I did the addiction yeah. one. Addiction. The addiction one. Yeah. Okay. The, you know, if he has trapped emotions, which is very, and ancestral DNA that needs to be cut, then that will kick in probably. I don't know. Let's ask Eric if he does, if you guys did the tune up, the cheap, the less expensive tune up on the entire household to release he, the trapped emotions. He says yes, and he's also saying, um, so part of this is, is okay, because the two of you have a spiritual contract where, um, and I mean, this is something that happens with a lot of us, especially with our relationships, like our, our marriages and partnerships and everything, um, is the energy that changes with you starts to affect the partner's energy. And huh? this is kind of what's happening. And it's already happened on a level, but he's saying that there there's more that could help your husband with the scalar work that's going to help you. It's like you bounce off of each other energetically. He's got his own stuff going on. He has his own stuff, right. but there's unspoken energy that works off of each other. And he says, when you tap into something for yourself, when you have something that you're directed in towards yourself coming from the inside of you, that it's almost like a light switch turns on with him. And you're going to see that start to change. He says, now remember he says it's not something that happens overnight. It's, it keeps mm-hmm. going back and forth like a little bit of a going up the stairs, up the stairs, one step at a time. Right. But once you get momentum going, he says, you're going to notice a very big change. It'll be like one of those things where you look back over your shoulder and say, wow, I can't believe we were there a year ago. I know. I, oh, I wow. feel like, should I keep trying or no? And then thank you for saying that we have a spiritual contract because that's yeah. another thing that I always thought, well, why? Yeah. Why am I? I feel stuck, but I feel like I need to help him. Yeah. Okay. You're okay, not, then you're not stuck. You know, a, a lot of times, um, Eric had me share this with somebody the other night. A lot of times we don't, you know, ourselves as, as doing this work and everything, don't talk about all the different things that we go through in our own relationships and things. And it's not easy. We, we all come at these different points that can be right. very challenging. And, but, but there's so much growth. We're together for a reason. And mm-hmm. we're often together to work through these difficulties. And we can't do it for each other. But when we do it within ourselves, that energy then reaches out and makes a difference with the other. And when we do the scalar work, it's like having that boost. It's like getting your oil changed and putting in the high test oil. It just gives it that big yeah. boost. And so which I scalar should I offer? Oh. Yes, go ahead. Well, do, do the cheap one. 
I'm telling you, I have seen, here's what I've seen. I've seen people, the two percenters, percent failures, that don't get mm-hmm. any results from the super portal work with increased vibration, now known as the energy repair, protection, enhancement. But when they get the tune-up, pretty much we do the entire thing all over again, but we add seven things. For every household member, even the pets, releasing trapped emotions and clearing those out, cutting all ancestral Mm -hmm. DNA, clearing out all Mm -hmm. old karma, finding, retrieving, and reintegrating all lost soul fragments, um, balancing masculine and feminine energies, um, grounding the person, anchoring the higher self into the energetic body. So those are super powerful. I didn't know to do that, obviously. I'm learning, just like everybody else is. But the Elohim does that for me, and it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's just incredible. Uh, and then all of a sudden, the person that's, I didn't see anything, they, we do this, and it's just like magic. It's, it's, it's really so beneficial. I can't give any promises, but it's the cheapest route, and I would not do the addiction thing again or anything like that. You know, I would just go where the money is. The, the bang for the buck would be the tune-up, <laughs> the ER. That's exactly what Eric tune-up. just said. Eric just said, biggest yeah. bang for the buck. Same time you did, Elisa. Yeah. That's what he said. All right. Good. Okay. Thank All right, you well, so much. Well, thank you. We're, for you. We're there for you. I got your back, girl. Thanks. Okay. Uh. 213 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hello. I'm doing well. Hi, Elisa. I'm glad you're feeling better. And hi, Michelle. Oh, thank you. Hi. hi. Thank you. I, I, Who is this? Um, Eric has, this is Lisa from California. Oh, yeah. Eric oh, has uh, previously told me that I'm a, I'm a healer and my, my job um, in this lifetime is to heal myself. And I've been trying to, but I wonder if it's if I'm healing um, a past life issue or is it a childhood issue that is most impacting Ooh. my health now? It could be a childhood issue that's also triggering mm-hmm. an issue in past life. But what does Eric have to say? I don't yeah. know. Um, Eric says, yeah, there is a little, there is a little bit of past life in there, but he says it's, it's like um, a trigger. And so he's saying that it's acceptance from childhood acceptance of your experiences, but he was also pointing to your throat, to like the mm-hmm. thyroid area and your throat area. Um, so being able to speak, being able to speak up. Um, did you have, um, and this may not be something you want to share here, but he's just saying that acceptance of, of what you experienced. Because he says everything is around acceptance right now. But the problem her. is that my yeah. childhood, there's a big gap. I don't, I don't remember a lot of stuff. There's a block. Uh, I, I can't. Okay. I don't. I know that there's, there's something, and I, I get a sense there was, there was some abuse, like sexual abuse. Yeah. But yeah. I have no memory of it, and yeah. I don't know how to bring it forward. Um, um, does that Eric have anything some, to do with it? Yes, it does. It does. And Eric said some past life regression would be good for yes. you. To, to help, and current to help life bring regression. some of that forward. Yeah. And current, what about current okay. life regression? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Who would I'm you sorry, recommend? you're saying a current? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, current, current life, life um, regression. He says you, you want to tie together because he says that the past life does have something to do with it, but um, to be able to tie the two together, but for you to be able to be regressed back to your childhood, to start to pick out some of these instances will give you the opportunity to be able to identify because there's things that he says that um, things that you've experienced as an adult that you could never really, you could never really see why you felt the way that you did, like where it came from. And so he so says some of this is that? tied back to that. Eric, okay. who could help you with that? Does Courtney do that? Cause he's saying Courtney. Mm-hmm. Okay, Courtney at okay. CourtneyDillon.com. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. All right, yeah. thank, thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. I won't do that. Thanks, thank you. Lisa. Okay, love Bye-bye. you. All right, 262 area code. Hey, what's up? Hey. <clears throat> Hi, this is Michelle. 
I was wondering if Eric could have my mother come through. What's her first name? Nancy. And her... Nancy. Let's see how she's doing. Yeah. She okay. died like two years ago. Okay. Oh, let's see. Michelle, did did your mom pass away with something in the chest area? See, the thing is, we don't know. All I know is she had uh, a, she had uh, blood clots really bad in her legs, and that's how it started. Oh, sorry. And we, pulmonary. Maybe. And what we don't the know. What is the initial of last name? Huh? And, and where did she die? That helps. Where did she die? At the um, yeah. in the hospice. Where it's a what town? Something that came from the came from the chest. It's a and that's how I validate them when they first come in. As I, okay. That's why I'm asking that because um, I'm getting something that came in from the chest. Um, <clears throat> mm. Yeah, yeah. We we're not sure how you know. All they said was at the end, the last day, that she <clears throat> before she passed, they said she she has cancer. It didn't make sense. It really didn't make it no sense. Well, you know, cancer she, um, she created multiple. a hypercoagulable state and make people get blood clots. It's called perineoplastic syndrome. And those blood clots can, you know, loosen and go to the chest and cause a pulmonary embolus, and that's a very sudden death. That's, uh, that's probably what happened. Do you, Michelle, do you feel, like, tickles on your right cheek sometimes? Sometimes. Because she's just tickling on the cheek, and she's just saying that she touches you. She touches she? on your cheek. Yes, she does. So oh. she wants to let you know that when you feel that, that's her, and that you can call on her. You can call and, like, ask for her, and she will do that and give you that validation that that's her, that she is okay. there. Um, okay. Can I just ask did her? She she... Go ahead. Yeah. Wait, did she have cancer? I'm sorry, I want to know, did she have cancer or did she have a pulmonary embolus or both? Both. Both. She, she, did, both. she okay. did have both. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's not uncommon. Is she with yeah, my father? Just... My father and my husband? Say that again? Is yes, she with she my is. father and my husband? Yes, yes she is. Yes, she is. Oh. Yes, she is. Um, okay. <clears throat> He's also saying that she she sends you music. I think I think more than one sends you music. Saying pay pay attention to music. Um, she also says that thank you thank you for the honor. Thank you. For the, what did you do just recently? Did you just do something for her? Um. No, I, I try to talk to her and thank her and stuff and um. Just I just had to talk to her and stuff. That's about it. And she keeps saying thank, thank you for the honor. Thank you for the honor. Like something that you've done for her to honor her. Uh, I don't know. All I know is I oh. took care of her the last year. I'm the one that well, that's took the care of her. Right there. And Did she um, think your yeah. husband was a handsome man, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. Because she's like, she's like, don't you worry about that handsome man. <laughs> Don't you worry about him. He's doing good. Um, another thing, I've been getting orbs. I have pictures of them in my oh, room. Yeah. A yes, lot of them. Have. I have yes, a camera have. in my you've room. Got, you've got quite a little party going on there. Yes. yes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eric's there, too. Oh, really? Eric's there, oh. too. Yes. Oh. Yes. And oh, I have cool. some fun with that because that's going to increase. Is you're going to be getting them in, in a lot of different places around you because they are very present around you. Um, they like to come in together. Um, sometimes your oh. mom will come in by herself. Sometimes your husband will come in by himself. But your mom often brings your husband in like they'll come in together. Okay. And your dad seems to come like right behind them like he's more quiet. Like you're right, coming yes. in behind them, but they but they do come in together. Mm-hmm. Thank you That's so awesome. much. Thank you're you. You're welcome, Thank you. Michelle. Thank you. You're welcome, Thank Michelle. Thank you for calling. Thanks. Okay. Um, 
917 area code. Hey there, what's up? Hi, how are you? Good, Hello. how are you doing? What we got Hello. here? My name is Ashil. Hi, Ashil. How can we help I'm you, darling? I just want to see what's the uh, message for 2022. Do I have to be more specific or I can just... Um, Eric, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Okay, let's see. I'll see what I'll see what Eric has to say here. Hang on. I was more interested in your career, to be honest with you, or love, whatever. So, um, what he's help. saying to you... Okay, well, I'll tell you what he's saying, and he, he says you can apply this to career and everything, but he says really important for you to hold a positive thought, like hold positive thoughts. So I don't know if you're having some trouble, like is, is, it, is a job something that you're having trouble getting? Um, right now or something that keeps saying hold, hold positive thoughts? Um, right now I'm, I'm self-employed. Uh, but I want to do more because I'm just feel like, you know, it's a new year. I, I, I'm reflecting. I feel like my life should be in a different place. So I want to do more, you know, be a little more successful. So that's just, all. I'm, I, I, I have dreams that I want to be more. Maybe that's why he's talking about, home. you know, stay positive. Okay. Because he says that this year is about change for you. And he says to bring that change forward is he says, um, hold positive thoughts. And he says, really, because sometimes it's, the heavier thoughts can sneak in. So he says it's really important for you to hold what you want, hold the positive thought. Um, he says now there's change that's going to come m- not in the next two months, but he's showing more towards the end of March, beginning of April. Okay, okay that's good. Mm-hmm. What kind of change? Oh, good. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Ashil. Good luck. Thank you, Ashil. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You bet. Eric, help him when you can. He says he's on it. Great. Thank All you for right. taking my call. Okay. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Hi. So oh, good. Talking- Who's this? Um, my, name, my name is Dion. Hi, Dion. Hi, Dion. Hi. Um, I did call a couple of months ago, and Eric gave me a really good positive reading about my new move, and I am very happy with where I am. Um, my oh. question is about my – yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. I was, I was scared, and he said, don't judge a book by its cover, and he was right because the place I'm renting, it didn't look good on the Internet, but it's fantastic. Oh, oh that's great. That's good. <laughs> Um, but with the new apartment became new responsibilities and financial mm-hmm. obligations. And I just started a new online store for my business. Do you see my mm-hmm. finances improve me? Or... Thank you. Yes. I'm very yes. excited. He said, yes. He says, yes. He says, it's all part of the process. So he says, you know, you're getting, you're getting help as well. So he says, pay attention to some of the signs that you're getting. Um, like numbers, he says, your spirit guides. Eric's waving his hand, so he says, to kind of help you along. But, yes, he says, you manifested this ability to be into this apartment. And he says, and you've also manifested the the opportunities and the things that you need to be able to support it. So he says, hold that. Just like he was saying to the last guy about holding that thought, he says, it's your job to hold that vibration, that thought, to allow those opportunities to come in. But he says, yes, you're doing good. He says, "Don't worry about it. Awesome. You have manifested what Erica, you need." Are you are you saying you're one of her spirit guides, or when you tell me yes, or you, not? You must have, you, Dion. You must have asked him to be a spirit guide because he's like waving his hand, like, "I'll take it. I'll take it." Oh, I am. No. Oh, wow. I love that too. Oh, right. Thank you so much. You're welcome, guys. We gotta close up. I'm so sorry, but. Y'all check out Michelle Gray at thehealingh-arts.com. Check out atlantisscalar.com and chillingera.com. And I love you guys. Bye. I love you, Eric. Love I love you, you Michelle. Love you, Bye. Eric. Love you, Mama. Bye. I love you.